lower the attachments. Um, that is something that an organization might have a requirement where EPDF um, uh, uniquely caters to. Any organization that uh, wants to eliminate costly uh, manual uh, document handling, um, and uh, it's also mentioned here, not only the handling, but also the, the distribution or redistribution of handled documents. Um, also organizations that um, are seeking for one more aspect of their business operation to have a centralized service uh, capability or uh, uh, centralized service in place to um, strategically organize their business processes with uh, pretty good oversight uh, and central control. Uh, and spreading out uh, desktop-based tools uh, is causing basically the exact opposite. You lose control while EPDF um, offers a capability that can be centrally deployed and therefore um, easily be uh, even phased, rolled out um, into um, any type of business process and therefore offers uh, um, all the uh, aspects of uh, a centrally controlled uh, solution. Well, any organization that uh, needs to meet requirements for regulatory compliance, um, I've mentioned that before as well, um, as well as uh, organizations that uh, now have to take care of uh, with a growing number of documents for long-term archival, and it is worthwhile noting here, um, and in the uh, supplemental information available for EPDF, you will also find a primer on um, the particular standard PDFA. PDFA um, is um, an extension, you might call it, or a subset, uh, technically correct, of the PDF standard, and it describes a long-term archival compliant uh, form of PDF that allows to legally um, store documents in uh, that PDF slash A format um, for long-term archival and, uh, and retrieval. This brings me basically um, also to the point in time where I would like to open up uh, the Q&A. In the background, I have a live system running and um, any question is welcome um, towards um, ePDF, how it is represented uh, when you have it installed or any specific question that uh, I might initially uh, can answer uh, for you to gain an understanding what EPDF can do for your organization. Are there any specific requirements uh, to the OS to run EPDF? The EPDF software installs into any given Lotus Domino server if you choose to have the uh, seamless integration in Lotus Domino but it is required that this particular Domino server is run on a Windows operating system, and this requirement is due to the engine uh, that EPDF uh, brings in that, of course, uh, allows the uh, office, uh, the office conversion and uh, various format conversions, which are natively uh, Windows-based. However, it is important to understand that the source files, your Lotus Notes application, they all do not need to be on that Domino server. It's just for the hosting of the EPDF software that a Domino server on Windows is required. OCR done also in PDF? Yes, the EPDF uh, engine has an integrated OCR uh, capability, which is character recognition of images. So if you have scanned documents uh, that may be in a image format such as, such as TIFF, but also PDFs that have come from scanners um, and only contain images, then they can be run through EPDF, processed through EPDF, and can be made searchable, respectively also indexable. So you can utilize them as, as full uh, text PDFs after EPDF has processed them, and that makes them particularly valuable to build knowledge bases uh, or search bases uh, and unlock these documents for electronic search and retrieval. What is the pricing is set up for this? Is it per server, or can you discuss that? Yes, uh, the pricing uh, model for EPDF uh, currently is um, 
server-based. There is no user-based licensing. So um, basically every instance of ePDF that gets installed gets licensed. Um, it's uh, licensed to the machine that it is installed on. And there, are, of course, um, there is a, uh, a pricing model in place that uh, allows to uh, economically stack ePDF engines. For example, if you need more capacity um, than um, a, a single server install, then a single server install might provide um, simply by technical throughput, throughput limitations, then additional ePDF engines that can be on virtual machines or um, additional hardware be installed can be licensed in addition to the main server license. So, uh, but in general, it's a central server-based licensing. <coughs> no CPU um, core particular uh, license uh, model in place at this point, uh, com non-comparable to, to the Lotus Domino that uh, uses core licensing. So it is basically the instance of the installation that gets licensed. The ZIP server, uh, can you explain a little bit about what that does? EPF, um, amongst uh, other format conversions, also has a full-fledged compressing and archiving, zip archiving uh, engine component inbuilt, which means you can not only produce PDF files that are then finally compressed and zipped. Um, a, good, a good use case for that capability is typically in the print industry um, and advertisement. They would want to have high quality PDFs, um, therefore they don't want to compress the images and reduce the size of these files. But if you then want to have them transferred electronically, um, you can have them compressed after the PDF has been produced um, and uh, zip archived. And ePDF has that inbuilt uh, capability to either on the input side, unpack a zip file and take all the uh, files that are in that zip archive and treat them according to that rule that is set up and or treat the result of the transformation process then uh, as a last step by archiving and compressing it into a zip file for um, saving bandwidth um, on, on electronic transmission. So what are the hardware requirements for document conversion, uh, including OCR? Um, well, that is basically a question that is uh, not answerable. Uh, there are minimum requirements that do not go beyond what the minimum install requirement for uh, for vanilla flavor Lotus Domino servers are. Um, the software is set up that it allows and leaves. Um, apparently, there is someone asking that has some experience with that. Um, that the software is configured and designed in a way that it leaves enough breathing space uh, for the Domino server and the operating system component on the host machine so as to uh, be under full load and still allow decent other housekeeping and sort of uh, live beat operations of the regular Domino server. Um, however, um, of course, OCR is one of the most resource intense uh, processings that you can have, so as many cores uh, uh, as the machine can uh, get and as much um, um, random access memory uh, that can be made available will benefit the overall performance. Uh, since the uh, throughput of course is limited um, mainly by technical resources uh, available in the host uh, that hosts the software. Is there any limitations on the version of the Domino server? Um, EPDF supports a broad range of Domino versions up to the current 8.52, and it closely follows uh, the release uh, cycle of the Domino version in supporting uh, the newest releases um, um, as quickly as possible. It, of course, always has uh, some, uh, you know, needs uh, uh, one additional uh, quality assurance cycle to follow a newly issued Domino release. Generally, um, any seven or eight uh, version Domino server is supported. There are some um, uh, a few exclusions um, as pertaining to um, particular hotfix versions of, the, of, of I, that IBM has released that cause uh, particular troubles, um, uh, mainly in the arena of 
converting Lotus Notes documents. Uh, it's worthwhile mentioning at this point that uh, the unique capability that ePDF uh, introduces is not only to treat file attachments of an, any form and format, but to generically render uh, and convert Lotus Notes documents, not only attachments, but also the Lotus Notes documents. And that, of course, as many experienced Lotus Notes users uh, know, uh, poses quite a challenge to do that efficiently and do that reliably on um, a large scale. And therefore, uh, we take very, uh, uh, we're very, very meticulous in, in testing and uh, making sure that it runs on all current Domino server versions properly or um, uh, specifically exclude those versions uh, can be all found in the documentation with the software. In the aftermath here, I'd just like to offer uh, if anyone is interested in seeing a particular aspect, for example, of a typical configuration of ePDF, then I can quickly bring up a, a picture of that um, and share it so as to um, get an ease of uh, feeling uh, how easy how easy it can be configured. Uh, Robert has asked if yes, you could please do that. Just show a typical um, instance. Okay, um, so uh, bear with me here for a second. I'll uh, bring up bring up a screen here. Um, Dawn, would you kindly confirm to me that you uh, can see the VMware coming up? Yes, we can see you. Okay. So um, just sort of give a quick uh, wrap up here of what we are seeing. We're seeing a Lotus Domino server running, and uh, it runs uh, the, the ePDF uh, software. Here, uh, it's easy to, to, start, to start it up at the server. Um, that's all you see basically as an administrator. Um, you have a configuration database um, and all there is to it is basically an, a single form that allows to set up rules. It is similar to domino policies or mail rules or whatever you know of a rule-based setup. And you can already uh, see here from uh, the t from the tabs, from the naming of the tabs, how a rule is, uh, what a rule is comprised of. Basically, you would have um, uh, source options to determine from where to take the source document. That can be uh, a mail inbox, it can be a, a notes database. Uh, EPDF also supports the former uh, domino.doc system of IBM, and of course, the file system. You can then filter uh, on the inbound as to what you would want to regard as being subject for processing. You can filter out specific formats, either include or exclude, say, for example, only Word documents or only Excel files. Uh, you can enable to treat also the, the generic Lotus Notes documents, or you can leave them alone and only deal with attachments if it comes to Lotus Notes. Um, you can set OCR options, um, uh, as many as you can think of. Um, you can also, and that's worthwhile mentioning, um, have Microsoft Office installed at the, um, at the ePDF server host as well in order to have a lossless conversion of uh, Microsoft Office documents. Um, uh, ePDF has multiple ways of being able to convert uh, more than 300 different file formats. And if it is not generic, then uh, you can choose here to use the native application, which at that point needs to be installed at the server, to, um, to do the conversion or to be utilized for the conversion. Once you have determined what goes in and uh, what may be excluded or included, uh, you determine where the result is supposed to go and how the result is supposed to look.